With many student borrowers not prepared to pay back predatory student loans in full after the Supreme Court struck down uh, Biden's 20 up to $20,000 in student debt relief, a poll that was taken shows that uh, the people that are impacted by this know exactly who to blame, and uh, it's not Democrats. In fact, uh, the majority of respondents blame the Supreme Court and Republicans for killing debt relief. Uh, this is according to a poll from Generation Lab. The survey released on Tuesday showed 47% college students and recent graduates across the country blame the Supreme Court for unforgiven student loan debt, where Republicans come in second at 38. Just 10% blame the president and only 4% blame Democrats. Wow. Uh, now, obviously, uh, we've talked about this before, but the challengers in that case, the Republican states uh, that led to the end of the president's plan were, again, six Republican attorneys general. So, yes, it was Republicans. Yes, they brought it to the Supreme Court. Yes, the Supreme Court is deeply conservative. And yes, uh, they voted to, again, strike down something that would help 40 million people. Now, there's more results here. Uh, the poll also found that about 77% uh, of young people knew about the court's recent decision, while 23% did not. Mainly it's because they pay attention to news, uh, social media, etc. 61% of those surveyed did not agree with the Supreme Court's ruling. 17% did. 21% were not sure if they agreed or disagreed with the court's decision. So now that debt relief, again, would have helped 40 million borrowers uh, and cost about $400 billion. So number one, let me just note that uh, I was wrong about this. I believe that students would actually blame Biden and the Democrats for not getting it done and would not turn out to vote in, in the next election. Because again, Biden ran on, oh, we're going to forgive some portion of student loan debt. This is a big thing. We're going to do this. And then it, you know, when it didn't happen, I figured that there was going to be some sort of, you know, uh, student revolt. You know, people were going to be very, very upset and go, can't believe Biden would do this to us. No, it turns out I was wrong. And I'm actually happy to be wrong. I, under I underestimated students and I'm glad that I underestimated them because, look, this is a massive defeat for 40 million people who are struggling with student loan debt right now. A and that's a fact. Um now, that said, politically, speaking about the entire politics of the thing, it's actually not as bad for Biden as I thought it would be. Now, that said, Democrats could do something to, you know, uh, stop the conservative Supreme Court, uh, and they could do so by expanding the Supreme Court. But they're not going to do that. They're not entertaining the notion. Most uh, establishment Democrats are not, at least. And that's pretty disastrous because that means that not just for the remainder of Biden's term, but for decades, for the next generation, nothing is going to happen. It, it, again, all conservatives have to do is just to challenge it in the lower courts, bump it up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court, as they are activist judges, will just strike it down. It doesn't matter. They can do it on just false, uh, you know, uh, false assertions, lies, if you will, and made up hypotheticals, uh, just like they did, of course, with uh, the decision, the recent decision that allowed for discrimination against LGBTQ folks. It was somebody who makes, uh, you know, websites, not even wedding websites, but theoretically, she wanted to make a wedding website. Uh, but, you know, she didn't want to have to make them for gay couples, even though she's never made a wedding website ever <laughs> and might still not even do so took it to the Supreme Court, and won, allowing discrimination to now be legal in this country against LGBTQI plus folks. So that's what's going on here, okay? That's what the Supreme Court's doing. Uh, this case, in this case, for the, uh, for the student debt relief, you had uh, this these activist judges take Republican attorneys generals at face value and ignore the fact that their standing argument i.e. having the standing to even bring this before a court was a lie. Emails, internal emails 
containing company calculations revealed that after debt cancellation is enacted, this was uh, uh, Missouri. Uh, this is uh, one of the big plaintiffs in the case was Missouri's uh, Mohila, uh, which is their you know student debt servicing um, uh, arm of the government, would actually not lose revenue. One internal company document called the Forgiveness Impact Summary outlined what would happen if the loan forgiveness plan were enacted. Figures from August of 2022 showed that if $20,000 of student uh, loan debt for Pell Grant recipients and $10,000 for student loans for every other borrower were forgiven, Mohila would still earn over $96 million in revenue from servicing direct loans, compared with $88.9 million in revenue in 2022, a 9% increase. So again, they were not impacted and therefore shouldn't even had any standing to sue. And this case should not have been taken up by the Supreme Court, it should have been thrown out. But instead, the activist judges in the Supreme Court decided to ignore it and claim that, uh, and use it to claim that the Heroes Act, which passed through Congress, it was an act of Congress, didn't allow the Secretary of Education to do loan forgiveness, which is preposterous because they're currently doing loan forgiveness. The department has been forgiving student loans left and right. Just recently, the administration forgave student loan debt for more than 800,000 borrowers. And this is just the latest one. But here's the thing. The right wing did not want this uh, debt relief plan to go through because it would have been a political win for Biden. But instead of it being a win for him, since they denied him that win, they thought that it would be, uh, you know, a big loss when it comes to people voting. Turns out, no, it might actually be a bigger loss for Republicans. It might actually galvanize student turnout. Again, I don't know how you could go against 40 million students and uh, not come out a loser, but Republicans, well, they figured it out. Then again, they could never count in the student vote anyway. And so I think it's pretty clear that they didn't care. They just didn't care and tried to appeal to people who just didn't want debt relief to go through for anyone. That said, uh, here's uh, Chairwoman of the House Committee on Education and the Workforce, Virginia Fox, Republican, quote, the Biden administration's blatantly political attempt to circumvent the Supreme Court is shameful. The Biden administration is trampling rule of law, hurting borrowers and abusing taxpayers to chase headlines. This is what she said after the loan forgiveness for 800,000 borrowers. You're hurting borrowers by helping them. But somehow the Supreme Court denying loan forgiveness for 40 million people, that is that is that helping? Is that what you consider to be uh, helping borrowers? No, no, no. And I, I, by the way, I also love the Republican argument here uh, that they've used against debt cancellation as, well, you're just promising free stuff for votes. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> That's kind of how you win elections, actually. You promise to make people's lives better. Canceling up to $20,000 of student loan debt for millions of borrowers would effectively make people's lives better. You know, help them... Uh, <laughs> be able to, uh, you know, finally uh, pay off their loan, pay it off sooner or completely get, get rid of it, allowing people to, you know, actually do normal things like buy homes, cars, and, you know, not be stuck servicing loans for the next 20 years, which by the way, in a lot of cases are predatory loans and don't actually help the economy because it takes money out of, and, and by the way, this is different than Stuff like credit cards, which again helps in consumer purchases, okay, or homes, which helps build wealth. Sometimes, uh, eventually, helping gener you know build generational wealth if the homes are you know passed down to your you know, kids, families, whatever. Um, all that stuff is uh, good for the economy, but student loans, well, they're not good for the economy. It's just taking money out of people's pockets for an education that in a lot of cases are required, but still actually doesn't pay enough to justify the cost of getting said education. And I'm not just talking about like 
uh, you know, the, the, the oh, gender, gender studies, which by the way, gender studies is based as fuck. So, I mean, a lot of the people that are complaining about gender studies should probably take gender studies. They would learn something. Uh, but even so, you have, you know, people that are getting business degrees, people that are getting culinary degrees and end up working at McDonald's. I mean, they've got a culinary degree. They can work at a high-end restaurant. And some of these people end up working at McDonald's for minimum wage and yet having to spend so much money on those degrees. So that's predatory and it's uh, an absolute travesty. That's why loans need to be forgiven. And by the way, I think we should do further. Uh, Biden's Biden's policy, while I think it's fine, you know, and I, and I think we should definitely do it. I, al I also don't think it's enough. I think it's nothing more than a Band-Aid, really, um, which wouldn't solve the real problem behind student loan debt. We need to eliminate tuition altogether from public universities, public colleges and universities, trade schools as well. Just get rid of the tuition. There was a time in this country's history where we actually had that. We do not anymore. And not only do we need to get rid of tuition to prevent people from getting this debt in the first place, but also to cancel all of the debt completely from public colleges and universities. Now, I'm not counting private schools because that's a different thing. Those are the correct policies, though. If you care about having an educated populace that will create new jobs and foster innovation, you'd be in favor of more education and making education accessible to everyone. And if you don't care about those things, well, then you're probably a Republican. 